Hello everyone, welcome to Arta Podcast Stories Behind Art. In this episode, we are going to explore how to make modern neon in the traditional way of the old Hong Kong master. For decades, Hong Kong streets were full of glowing neon lights, giving the city a futuristic aesthetic. During the gold age of neon, many local and international artists took inspiration from the chaotic, dense and dark streets of Hong Kong, which translated to many films inspired by this style, such as Blade Runner 2046 and Ghost in the Shell. Unfortunately, neon lights have slowly disappeared from the streets as cheaper and more energy-efficient LED lights emerge. Hong Kong has been enforcing a new law where old neons that don't meet the latest safety guidelines are forced to be dismantled and those vanish from the streets. But there's a new generation of artists and designers who want to keep the classic craft alive by giving it modern meaning. My guest today is one of them. She's a student of Mr. Wong, who for more than five decades produced thousands of neons glowing around the city. My guest is creator of CK Low, most known for fantastic light installations and art exhibitions such as My Light, My Hood, which combine a group of contemporary artists with traditional crafts and show the artworks in a new, modern way. Finally, her next big project is coming very soon, a large neon installation for one of the biggest music festivals in Asia, Wonderfruit Festival 2019. It is my pleasure to welcome Karen Chan, who will walk us through not only how to make neon in traditional way, but also tell us how it is to work alongside one of the oldest master of this craft in Hong Kong. Hope you will enjoy this episode. Let me know what do you think about it. And please subscribe to this channel if you like this kind of content. Enjoy the episode. Karen, welcome to the show. Yes. Uh, it's such a pleasure to have you uh, with our audience and I am so happy to ask finally about Neons because this is on my mind for such a mm. long time and, and you have such a privilege of learning from Hong Kong master this very unique craft, very old craft. So I'm looking forward to ask you so many questions today. Um, and But first of all, I wanted to start from uh, from your introduction, I know that you are working as an art director at uh, CK Law. Uh, could you tell us a bit more about the organization and what you do there? Um, yeah, so CK Law is an art design studio where we support and involve a lot of local artists and designers in our projects. Um, and on the side, we would um, explore and experiment on different technology uh, mm -hmm. in uh, to provide alternative solutions for our client. So um, some of the works that we do um, involve a lot of like light or neon light installations or even like neon light inspired. And um, on the side, we are very much focusing on fostering local craft. That's why every year we would launch some non-profit art programs that are actually a combination of local craft and um, contemporary artists. Um, oh, it's such a <laughs> it's such a great mission to mix it together. So the the contemporary artists with the old crafts. So who have you promoted so far? Um. So. Uh, we have been working with a lot of artists or maybe I can do a very brief introduction on why do I set up the studio or even mm -hmm. um, why do we have programs like this um, is that my background was actually set design for stage and screen. So I'm always very much um, amazed by how a space can emit a certain atmosphere to catch your eyeballs. 
And unfortunately, after I graduate, I didn't work in the theater scene in Hong Kong. But then um, I was working as a visual merchandiser for a luxury brand, mm -hmm. where it's actually very similar to theaters, where within a short window front, you have to catch eyeballs of the client or customers who just walk past, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I realized that I really wanted to get into something really artistic. And I was working with a contemporary um, emerging British artist called uh, Han. Henry Hudson and as his assistant. And that's when I wanted to promote art and craft um, to younger generations or like even to spread more knowledge to them through art and craft. Um, and so I went on to do a master degree of design and technology focusing on museum and exhibition design because I realized that through museums and exhibitions, that's when you can spread message um, to wider generate um, demographic mm -hmm, and even mm -hmm. especially to younger generations. So, um, and then I came back to Hong Kong and worked in a gallery. Um, and that's when I am more in touch with the art scene in Hong Kong. And based on my background in design and art, I have a lot of like talented artist friends or designer friends. But unfortunately, like um, in the market of Hong Kong, it's very hard for them to even to have their work being exposed. Like they might have mm. um, a lot of followers on social media, um, but there's, um, it's very hard for them to arrange an exhibition themselves, let alone to have a gallery representing them. So this is also why I founded the studio um, to actually to try and help local talents or like international talents that are based in Hong Kong for them to have an, a commercial exposure. And um, as well as that is my personal belief that I think a lot of our um, local craftsmanships or any other um, local cultural heritage should be cherished or passed on and preserved. That's why we launched a lot of non-profit art program that is a combination of local craft and young artists and see what kind of chemistry we can bring out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. Yeah, It's such a beautiful mission. And uh, as Arta, I, I, I also had kind of the same thought as you, that there is a lot of artists who are fortunately they don't have where to how how to expose like how to be exposed how to uh, get the exhibition and and showcase their work not only online but physical location and and it's it's such a it's so great to see the exhibition which we'll talk about as well in in just a moment. Um, so how long ago did you start um, um, the studio? Uh, the studio. We have actually started the studio for around one year and a half now, uh, but we have been doing these kind of nonprofit program uh, for two to three years already. Mm -hmm. The first one actually um, was um, co-organized by me and a lawyer friend of mine, and we did um, an exhibition on Temple Street, like a right on Temple Street in front of a shop front of a clay rice, uh, clay pot rice restaurant. Mm -hmm. And um, the idea is also to bring in a lot of different artists from different cultural backgrounds and ask them to do a work about clay pot rice. Mm -hmm. It was quite interesting as it was the first one we tried to do. And uh, we it was supposed to be a private event where we also have clay pot painting workshops. And for people to understand the difference um, about ceramic paintings and acrylic paintings. And, um, and also we have actually had a lot of um, street visitors like actually are interested in our works because we were really like putting all the works on the street. And then, um, and after that, we did another exhibition at Taipan Roll, a bespoke tailor shop about um, androgynous. Um, uh, so it's a body related art exhibition. So you and then um, last year, like last December, we did um, the neon light exhibition at Kong, mm -hmm. um, a former car park place in Hong Kong. And so you can actually see we are trying to also pick locations that are not standard white walls, mm -hmm. because what we believe is that art should be anywhere for anyone. So, yeah, we should be able to like appreciate them anywhere yeah yeah, yeah. It, it, it's such a great idea and uh, i i had the pleasure to to visit the last exhibition uh, my light my hood uh which was focused about neons and uh from actually from there 
I discover how much I, I just love the concept of neon in art. Um, so talking about this, could you tell us about the latest, the, the exhibition? Um, who, um, who did you uh, invite to participate in it? Yeah, so um, the idea of My Light, My Hood is actually based on neighborhoods of Hong Kong. We chose um, the former car park because um, a car park or a car garage to us is like a place for a car to take rest so that they can take us to better journeys. Similar to Hong Kong as our home, where we're all met, where talents are being nurtured, um, where ideas are being taken shape. So it's a place where it take us onto a better life journey. So um, from this exhibition, I've invited six different artists. We have four local artists and two international artists to work on um, works that represent or impress them the most. So it's about the neighborhood that they feel most about and they would use their original artistic approach to create the work. And on top of that, we'll use neon as an accent to represent um, the cultural heritage of Hong Kong and also as uh, giving new uh, the neons a new meaning and a new purpose as an artistic medium. So um, it's very interesting because uh, ranged from we have a uh, kick decorative artist, we have uh, Felix who is um, caricature illustrator. Yeah, I just yeah. love that one. Yeah. Yes, and then we have an artist duo who is um, an installation artist duo, and then we have um, we also have another installation and sculpture artist Dan. And Fred, who is a visual um, artist as well. So we draw a lot of a very wide range and diversity of artists from different backgrounds to, to put the show on. And um, it's very interesting because like uh, based on different background or based on the different medium each artist use, they actually interpret their neighborhood or neon in a very special way. So um, I can even talk about like the work from Felix. Mm -hmm. um, his work is about um, the Chinese dancing unicorn. Mm -hmm. So um, because of his uh, family background, he needs to go to the Chinese temple for every like different festivals. And for him, this is what represents um, his childhood memory back in where he's born, right? And um, so he did um, the first drawing that is not about any human or not any portrait, but like actually a performing artist and um, how the original work is also seen as, uh, you see the neon mm -hmm, here, mm -hmm. is actually flickering um, according to the rhythm of the Chinese unicorn performance. Amazing. We are family. What what does exactly mean? Like what is this, uh, what is the reason on on the painting to to put it on? So like um, if you can see from his work, like there's a lot of like banners uh -huh. where uh, a lot of traditional Chinese temples would have, or like any traditional ancestral hall. So because Felix is actually from the Chan clan, Chan family, mm -hmm. he has already had the. Chan banner here mm -hmm. and because this is his like ancestral hall so that's why he put on a very modern touch of we are family mm -hmm. and actually uh, even from the unicorn head that you can see like he even um if you can read chinese mm -hmm. it actually has his like chinese surname mm -hmm. chan there and also uh -huh. like with the english oh, to yeah, implicate yeah, yeah, yeah. that can, this is that. um representing like a festival hold in his like um mm -hmm ancestral hall mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. and it has been quite an interesting journey because um the master that we work with is actually the last neon light uh, master who can repair neon light in hong kong and for him um all his life he's been doing like perfect like very well done super good quality commercial neon street signs and um when we're asking him to collaborate with us to work on the neon signs, he doesn't understand what we are doing. Because imagine like even for Felix's work, you can see the neon is actually sticking out uh, as a tail of the Chinese unicorn. Mm -hmm. But um, for the master, usually for all the works he does, if you, after the day, you can also look closely to the commercial street signs. They always have a frame, a metal frame that is around them to protect them. So for him, when I told him that 
like, oh, you can just, can you just help us make a neon and then we'll assemble it ourselves without any metal plate <sighs> around it. He was so scared. He was like, oh, are you sure you can handle it? Um, really? You're just drilling it on the wall? Like he's very worried. But then um, after um, even like one of the piece, um, uh, it's actually a piece about Typhoon Mankit and the artist is trying to do the flickering effect mm -hmm. um, as well. But for him, as a perfect neon light um, sign ma master, like he would say that uh, if a neon would flicker, it means that it's not first, it's not well done. Second, it means that it's broken. And so he refused to do it <laughs> in the beginning. He just doesn't, um, he doesn't want to have his work being seen like as imperfect yeah, yeah, to be yeah, launched. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, we found out different ways to actually <laughs> um, make the flickering um, effect without affecting the work. So he was happy at the end. And also we explained to him that um, that is exactly what the artists want to portray. Like um, the, flick the flickering of the, or the unstable stage of the neon shows um, Typhoon Mancus has broken a lot of our nature and also like even for neon signs. So it's just a visual representation mm. of the, the effect yeah, from the yeah, typhoon. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then um, since we did not um, break his neon and uh, <laughs> we're just trying to, and we keep on explaining to him, it's just a visual effect. Mm -hmm. He accepted it. And also like when he see the work, he's like, he's actually quite impressed on how like neon signs could be seen as art as well yeah, and how yeah, they yeah, actually yeah, yeah. turn out to be just drilled on the wall to be installed or yeah, like yeah. um how many years he's doing it yeah he's been doing it for more than 60 years yeah so yeah i guess the it, it's hard to transition to the different purpose of, of neon which yes. is also art um, and actually talking about purpose of preserving the craft preserve the 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 unique craft and the traditional um technique um why do you think it's worth to uh, to stick to the to this technique to use the glass and it's extremely hard and we'll just maybe talk about this a little bit later on about how how to make the neon and, and talk about the process but um so you you have you have the glass neon and you also can use a new techniques, which it's uh, based on plastic, right? So, yeah. um, so why why glass is so special? Uh, for me, first, um, the neon glass is the traditional way to do neon signs. First. <laughs> and then um, also in our exhibitions, um, we had a lot of um, different decorative elements that we actually used the LED strips, mm -hmm. which is the LED neon signs. Um, that you can see nowadays. And for me, they emit just different levels of light or even the artistic effect that they emit is so different. Because like, if you even look at the traditional neon, I can look at it all day without, without being hurt, like without my eyes being, um, feeling unpleasant. Yeah. And for the LED neons, like uh, for our exhibition, we actually uh, wrap it up with the LED strips and to be honest, it's very sharpening. Like it looks very nice on pictures, but if you look at it more than five seconds, you will already be mm. dizzy a little yeah. bit. Yeah. And so like, it was very interesting back at the exhibition when we compare traditional glass neon with the LED mm -hmm. neons. And I think there's also more uh, artisanal craftsmanship involved in making a traditional glass neon. This is why I think it's very important for us to preserve it um, because of the years of experience that actually needed to master this skill. Mm -hmm. um, and it is involving fire and the, yeah, the knowledge of fire and the knowledge of even um, how to use gas, how to use air to blow it out is an orchestra of skills that needed to produce one work. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying there's no um, skills needed for LED neons, but there's just less artisanal skills that needed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very special, I guess. And um, I think what I treasure a lot is also how it's kind of an intangible cultural heritage of Hong Kong as a neon street science, because like... Um, Hong Kong has been seen as the inspiration of a lot of sci-fi movies. We There are a lot of artworks or movies or even video games that are based on Hong Kong. 
and how people are seeing it as a futuristic city. And、um, the reason why is also we back in the fifties and sixties we have a lot of neon sign masters who are actually doing a lot of neon signs in Hong Kong and actually light up our city. And this is how、um, Hong Kong is also being named of the Pearl of the Orient based on the lights that we have in every tower, right, or even、yeah. on every street. Yeah. So I think it's very important for us to keep this、um, visual language within our city. Absolutely, absolutely. And as you said, there is no many of、uh, people masters who are still alive and who are still doing the craft. Do you know how many、uh, people are actually doing the old technique way、uh, in Hong Kong still? Yes, I know that there are still a few masters in the city doing it. And like you're saying, yes, there. I think that should be less than ten, and the reason is also、um, very similar to other fading craft that we met in Hong Kong is that the demand is not high, so the masters they cannot like a lot of them cannot use、um, neon making as their career anymore. They might have to have a day job or they're doing it. As a part time, we are very lucky to have the master Wong that we worked with. Like he actually has his own studio, so he can actually do it whenever he wants. But from what I heard, some of the neon masters they have to、um, a few of them have to rent one studio, and then they will just have to schedule it amongst themselves.、Mm. So is that's why maybe the cost for making neons is also higher now because of the other aspects. Mm -hmm. And、um, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's 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 extremely important、uh, to. And my next question would be、uh, related to it: to have the new generation following the path and and learn from from the new master from the old masters、uh, and and kind of incorporate the new style in the old technique. And talking about this, when did you decide to to pursue? It? Uh, neon making, and when did you start to to be interested in in this form of art? Actually,、um, after the exhibition, my light, my hood. After a、uh, like intensive like conversations with the master, like it is, it definitely has like raised my interest in neon making, and we also had some、um, small workshops between the artists and Sifu back then. And that is when I realized it's such a hard craft to master, and but at the same time it's very similar to Chinese calligraphy, which I personally practice as well, because like、um, in Chinese calligraphy, it's more about the emotion, how you express,、um, maybe a poem or a situation in one go, and usually it's the expressionism that is highly valued. Yi it maybe sometimes you write something wrong in your closet out. Mm -hmm. And actually, it's very similar to neon making. It is、um, you have to plan it well, and if you don't,、uh, if you when you're bending the neon, if you did something wrong, and that's it. But then sometimes it's also the beauty of it because I'm a very experimental person in terms of exploring mediums. I just fell in love with it on how I can try to be experimental, but at the same time be able to produce the shape that I want. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can do something completely new and、uh, not constrained to the metal frame as as in the old days as well. So,、um, so talking about the transition for 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 the craft itself from from the old style of being only used for、um, outdoor advertising to、uh, having the different purposes, can you and and also styles? Could you tell us a bit more about the new styles? Uh, which you can see, and what neon is used for right now. Yeah, I've seen a lot of、um, artists. They're trying to use neons in their work as well. Some of them are. I recognize some of them are using、um, it as like a neon sign, like in the way in the traditional way of making neon, and then try to make them like an art installation. There are also some artists who are using neon as a touch. Like、uh, what we did for the exhibition, my like my hood. Like sometimes they might have、um, a little abstract line to add to the painting. So I'm seeing that people are trying to transform neon into an artistic way. And for us, like I think for the artists, neon is also just one of the other mediums. 
So I'm glad that to see that it can have another way of um, purpose or like survival meaning for neon itself rather than just using it as a commercial sign, mm -hmm. which we all know that um, it's going to be less and less. Do you see any other purposes or features which can be used uh, in our modern time? I think um, some, like in an artistic means, um, we are also trying to promote it through different festivals. And this is what our studio is doing in um, the upcoming Wonder Fruit Festival. What we're trying to do is, um, it's actually a piece, um, a neon art and bamboo installation about global air quality and how we are um, um, trying to promote neons is that we will combine the old broken neon that are left on the street because of the government regulations that a lot of the signs have to be taken down. So we take these broken neons or unwanted neons and try to give them a new shape, a new um, abstract shape for our piece. And now the question is, like you're doing so well, uh, now you have this big project uh, going on. What in 2020, what you are planning to do in 2020? Yeah, in 2020, we have, we're launching another nonprofit art program that is collaborating with bird cage making craft and also my downtown carving. So, um, it's actually in line with the mission and belief we have with the neon light, uh, exhibition, my light, my hood. Um, from that, actually, what I realized is that, um, a lot of craft are failing because of the, there is less demand. And sometimes it might be the government regulations, or sometimes it's just that our modern behavior uh, has changed already, that we do not need these products made by a certain crafts or even the services that they provide. So um, let's say uh, the bird cage making is, uh, back in the days we had bird flu, and that's when the government, Hong Kong government have actually launched the uh, they do not suggest people or they do not encourage people to have birds yeah. as pets anymore. And um, also you see a lot of youngsters, they're actually walking dogs on the street these days. So they probably have dogs and cats as their pets. So bird cage or even the hobby of having birds as pets was something um, that like uh, the generations before thought of as a representation of social status. Also, when they go to Yum Cha and the Chinese restaurant, they would bring the birds and then like they would talk to them and then show around to their friends. They will exchange knowledge about how they're raising their birds, just like how we're doing with uh, when we are walking our dogs and you meet another dog owner and then you have conversations. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's this kind of behavior that we have changed that might have um, made these craft dying. So we're trying to see if we can, again, combine contemporary art to give them a new meaning. And we're, we are launching an artist in residence program now where the masters and the artists, they will have intensive like learning sessions where um, a lot of intangible conversations were created. And uh, we totally value like it's particularly this part because um, a lot of products can be industrialized at the end of the day, but it's all these like in, intangible like facts and knowledge from these craft masters mm -hmm. that that needs to be passed on to yes. younger generations. Yes, absolutely. And so this is what we aim to. And through the conversations with the master, the artists, they will create artworks that are also in their own, with their own means of like artistic approach, but to also incorporate maybe part of the craftsmanship or even like a little bit of the knowledge of the craft itself to their work. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it's such a great idea. Yes, and this, and then um, for the works to be made, uh, they will be displayed on a tram, a public moving tram, next year in from March to April during the Art Basel mm -hmm. like week. Yeah, I cannot wait to see that and and go on board uh, of of the tram. I think it's the first ever initiative like that in yeah. Hong Kong. So it it would be great to see it. Is it anything else which you would like to share with us before we go on to the second part interview where um where we focus more about the process of make, making neon and just go a bit step by step um, mm -hmm. for someone who is interested why it's so hard and why it's not many people who have actually do uh, a neon with glass um, anything else would you like to add? Mm -hmm. 
No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wasn't thinking. <laughs> <laughs> no. Karen, welcome to the second part of the interview. So good to be here. We are not actually in the studio of the Old Master, yet we have a recording made by Fred, who um, who recorded the Shifu making neons as well. You, Karen. Yeah. Um, so if you can walk us through the process, um, what we can see in the video. Yes. So this is Master Wong, the um, um, Neon Light Master that I um, mentioned earlier. And um, he's actually making fresh piece. So you can see we have some drafts on the uh, for him to trace. And um, actually, and then these are like different sizes of neon. And the tricky part of it is um, that uh, when we are giving C for the draft, he is. Um, he has his very own traditional way to draw it, and all the neons um, draft that we gave him have to be the exact same with the exact same width as the neon he's gonna make. So as a modern artist, we use AI to do the drawings, and then we just print it out for him. Else, um, I actually can also show you a hand drawn draft yes, that he usually has mm -hmm. later, and then you will see the difference. Mm -hmm. And so. The Sifu now is actually trying to vacuum the neon now so that it could, it will um, have all the, uh, it purifies it before he actually put on the neon gas. And that's how you see it turn into from green to red oh. as well. Oh, could you actually tell me how you are making the different colors of it? One more yeah, time? yeah, yeah, sure. So there are two types of neon gas. Uh, one is neon gas, which is more orangey or uh, reddish. And the other one is uh, argon gas, where, there's, uh, where they're used to make like maybe white, blue, purple neon, that are more in the bluish mm. tone. Yeah, yeah. So these are the two gas that we use. And then um, as well as the tubes, they will have some different powder along it. This is how it it can change the color as well. Mm -hmm. Not the change in color, but how it defines the color of each neon tubes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so these are um, some also some images of um, the workshops we did at For My Light, My Hood with uh, Fred and another artist, um, Sweet Spot Cake. <laughs> She's a cake decorator and she made a piece of work um, oh, wow. out of clay and watercolor and it was her first time i'm so proud of her <laughs> yeah, i'm very proud of a lot of the artists that actually got out of their comfort zone for that um, exhibition wow. and um, i can explain how the traditional commercial signs are made so first um, we make a draft and this is actually a piece from the installation artist duo rehyphenate for their work uh, book swapping and they made a draft in different colors on how they want the work to make you see there's like green orange um, blue and then afterwards we have to um work on um like i was saying earlier like uh, the exact width of the work on on ai we're trying to draw the lines like in um, 12 millimeters or 10 millimeters and so this is how you see we trace it mm -hmm. and then afterwards we will flip it backward so that when we are doing it for the commercial street signs, um, the front side would always be flat. Mm -hmm. And then the making. Yay. Yay. So that's the fun part, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, like we use a different way to do it because it's for an artistic artwork. And I like to explore things in three dimensions. That's why I try to respect the traditional making method, but still experimenting like some some part of like how the relationship with fire and glass myself to try to do something that's more 3D. Like I actually enjoy it a lot. And um, you can see I was trying to um, part of a very important part of neon making is also how to join two neon glass too, because like each of them is around like this size, which is around maybe one meters 30, something like that. And um, imagine if you have to make a, like a large scale of work, you probably need to join like two or three neon tubes. And so the joining part is actually quite important. Mm -hmm. It's like a basic step as well, which I'm trying to master these days as well. And so this is 
me trying to like connect the old mm-hmm. neon with the new one mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then um you look so yeah. focused here yes it needs definitely high concentration especially for beginners like me so um there are so many times um and also when you're playing with fire it's really playing with fire you have to be so patient with all the angles that you need to have um, the whole glass tubes to be um, heated 360 degree. Mm-hmm. And sometimes if you are impatient enough or you just got distracted, you will bend it and break the glass very easily. And also, we also have a tool here, mm-hmm. um, which um, you have to put a stopper on one end and then the other end you is actually um, like a breathing, a blowing tool. Mm-hmm. So the reason to have that, usually I will, when I'm making it, it will be like this at the back so that it doesn't mm-hmm. disrupt me. And then when I'm doing it, I just slowly blow the air in because it has a stopper. Uh-huh. So air can definitely go in and just like, Mm-hmm, like that, mm-hmm. gently. Uh huh. And um, the reason for this is because imagine when you're bending a glass like this, like this is a good example as well. Mm-hmm. Like you can see it got thinner. Mm-hmm. So um, in order for the glass not to break while you're bending it, you have to blow some air in so that it can have a perfect curve with the same diameter inside. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it must be really hard to get enough yes. but not too much and then as you yes mentioned, like, i bring so force, many but not too far <laughs> yes yeah it's like the balance between everything and yeah. because fire is something that is a total like new medium for me so i need to take time to master it as well to know when it's gentle or not like yeah. even for the machine that i'm using like this um the gas the amount of gas and the air is very important as well mm-hmm. so if it changed a little bit it it would just um adjust the the whole experience will be so different yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. that's quite interesting let me see if that's uh, yeah and then this is when um i'm discussing with the master about a piece that i made which is the new neon for a uh, wonderful and how I want the old neon to actually uh, connect with it so that it has a new form of shape, although it's a very abstract line. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's when he like, he's like, oh, you're messing around again. <laughs> <laughs> like, ah, yeah, why are you doing this? I don't do it. I can do it for you. And I'm like, no, but I want to You can try. see on this picture, it's like, oh my God. <laughs> messing no, around no, actually, again. actually, I see a, a bit of smile. So I think you, did, you are, <laughs> You are doing some good job uh, here. Yeah, he said he's quite surprised <laughs> on what I've achieved, actually. <laughs> he also knows that, like, he was like, ah, yeah, you have to take, like, a year to practice it, like, da, da, da. But, hey, okay, la, at least some of them are flat. Because <laughs> for him, the flatness is very important mm-hmm. for them to be stable, which I understand as well. But um, I also explained to him it's an art project. So like, and especially for me, I'm more like a set designer, someone with 3D. I really like three-dimensional work myself that I think um, we were also thinking of just hanging the work um, in Wonderfruit, like just have a lot of pieces hanging like that. So it'd be quite interesting. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can show you. um, Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, is it, uh, so after you do that, then... Ah. then you are putting the gas on or yeah. what is so what is the next step yeah so um what we are doing here is we have oh draft that i mentioned earlier would be looking like this mm-hmm. so oh, you so can see Sibu is trying to do the exact same rhythm mm-hmm. shape. of the neon mm-hmm. let me just go on the other side as well. wow and then and that's the old neon which you rescue, right? Yep. This is the old neon which we rescue. And you can see, so what we are trying to do, we will try to combine it with the piece of neon that we make. Um, yeah. with a, So that it has a new shape. Mm-hmm. And look at the new job that I make and the new mm-hmm. that I try to do. It's very hard to do words, I would say, like even for an E. 
like to have the to obtain the exam sick curb is very hard mm -hmm. and you see the marks here is actually how hot each tube is mm -hmm. whenever i try to after i make it i try to see oh if uh, the shape is correct or not mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then all right this is when i will press it on the paper and then mm -hmm. exactly and even like like i was mentioning earlier the planning is very important so for me originally like when we're writing EA, it's like this, right? Mm -hmm. So based on my skills, I was trying to do it like I'll do this curve here first. Mm -hmm. And then I will do the other parts. So I'm actually making the curve here. And then the second part I'll make will be this rather than this curve. Uh -huh. If you get what I mean. Uh -huh, so I'm not, uh -huh. And then um, I will... The original plan was to, after I make every part, and then I will bend it in 90 degrees so that the A appears. Uh -huh. Because that will be easier for me personally to make yeah, um, yeah, yeah. as a beginner. <laughs> but still, I, I, I realized that I have to give up on the A. I have to make it separately based on my skill because the A is yeah, so yeah, hard yeah, to yeah. make. Like This one is from Sifu, actually. Uh -huh. Yeah. And um, you can tell... Um, yeah, he's really making a lot of uh, very precise curves. Mm -hmm. And this um, is all by blowing the air inside. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, with this. And another thing for this tube, the good thing is that it could measure how much neon do I need. So let's say if I'm making this one, I would have to draft. And then, okay, or maybe the EA is easier. So I could approximately measure it like this. Mm -hmm. And then like just make it like like this. Then I know that I need this much of neon. Oh, okay. And then I huh. can see if my neon is enough or not. That's when I realized that. Actually, I don't have enough neon for the A. That's why I have to make it separately. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, yeah. that's a that's a smart way of, of yeah. uh, working with, with the tools. Yeah. Is the last part the electricity part mm. which you are doing? So then later on you just put uh, in yeah. the fuses? Or? Yeah, so this part where you see it has the fuse, like mm -hmm. it's done by Sifu. Mm -hmm. So um, the process was that, like, imagine after I give him one piece like this, Mm -hmm. He will then um, vacuum it mm -hmm. um, and burn the whole tube so that it's all purified inside. And then mm -hmm. he will put the gas in afterwards. And that's when the neon could be lit. Uh. Yeah. And also, yeah, and also it would have to end. So um, this part will be um, closed. And then this would be where he's putting the gas in. And after that, he's, um, you can see in here that's when he cuts the um, um the mm -hmm. open cut and then amend it so that all the gas are trapped inside wow um how long the gas will remain um, and mm. and give the same ah, okay. light so like um a very good piece should be able to last for like from 20 to 30 years wow yes it depends on the quality of the glass the glass that we're using are all like American glass tubes. Um, they are very strong, and also um, yeah, and also the skills of the masters. Like for the for Master Wong, his work can last for a long time. For me, my work is kind of three dimensional. It depends if you like if you break it halfway through or yeah, yeah, yeah. So it depends yeah, 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 on yeah. that. Wow, yeah. and also they are quite safe. For the neons that we are using, you can mm -hmm. actually touch them. Mm -hmm. So they are not, um, unlike commercial street signs that has super high voltage, ours is like lower. Mm -hmm. That's why it's um, better for domestic use or like for artworks. Mm. They won't be afraid that it will burn off your house one day. In case this kind of neon will break, um, is the gas dangerous or is it anything besides of the glass itself? Like um, Yeah, um, it will have very slight amount of mercury, but like it's not it's not dangerous as dangerous 
Mm -hmm. Because, like, imagine it has less mercury than a thermometer. Mm -hmm. So, and then usually the mercury, they will slip into your wall or something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so yeah. I would say it's more about the glass that you have to be careful of. Mm -hmm. And the gas we use here is, like, the amount is so tiny that... Yeah, it's, it, it won't yeah. hurt. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And now, I, you mentioned already in our interview that to that it's less and less masters and then it's also less demand because of uh, the government rules um, therefore neons is more and more expensive so how how much neon mm. could cost of course it depends on the the shape probably and the size but if you can tell us what is the current price in the in the market um i would say for a work that's like maybe one one point two meters by one point two meters, if it's all made in neons, according to how many colors you need, according to how complicated it is, if mm -hmm. it's one very smooth curvy line or if it's a lot of mm -hmm. like complicated joints like this, mm -hmm. it should be around ten k Hong Kong. But it I. I know that a lot of the price is actually depending on how complicated it is, especially if you're making words that are very tiny, it would need a lot of skills. Mm -hmm. So then it will add up to oh, the cost. So smaller would be actually more expensive because yes. you need to bend it more, I guess. Yes, right? because if you... Okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. No worries. If you look at this, this is already... A, um, the whole piece was uh, one by... 1.5 meters by one point, yeah, uh, by one meters, and then all the words are blow up. But you can see like all these kind of joints will mm -hmm. be what it made it cost a lot. Or even like you see, mm -hmm. like oh, the yeah. Chinese character here, like all these very complicated parts is exactly where the sifu needs to bend a lot, and this yeah. is where the experience and skills kicks in. Mm -hmm. And for, for Shifu, uh, okay. how long it could take to do this kind of piece from to from scratch to, to the think, ready neon? I think this one he could probably do it within one day. Oh wow! So yeah, it's because quite... he's very he's very quick, like with the master that we work with. But it also depends on um, the mark, like how many work has to, does he have? Yeah, but yeah. as well as he that he doesn't take uh, commercial street signs anymore. So it's more like a hobby for him to mm -hmm. repair and to help out artists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so Fantastic. like, that's why um, I don't know if, uh, but I think usually he should be able to work on it within one to two days. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. So he doesn't, there is no a need, let's say, for the glass to cool off, etc. You can work oh, with no. it yeah, you straight don't away. That. Yeah, you can use it right away. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah. So that's the good point that it's not a process which will take a, a week because yeah, 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 you need no, to wait for something no to drying. dry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all done. <laughs> good, good, good. Just like a personal question, you as an artist, uh, are you planning to to actually pursue the path and and learn more and stick to to neon uh, in the future? Yes, yes. Actually, I'm also thinking of going into different neon studios around the world oh, wow. to, to learn different skills. And that's how I think I can learn from different masters or even to see if there's any potential to tweak some of the element in it and to make a, to use it as a really as a new medium, like out of the shape that we commonly know Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I'm very interested in um, visiting the studios in Japan or like the one in New York or like Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. Even um, for the wonderful um, project, we are going to be in contact with the Thai Neon Studio as well. Because like for us, like, we contact them um, so that just in case of any neon break, we can have a studio to fix it. Oh, yeah, but at the same cool. time, I'm also very interested to know if there are uh, if they use a different method to make their neons. Uh -huh. Yeah, because even for me, like after spending time with Sifu, I can kind of distinguish neons that are made in Hong Kong and China. Oh. Yes, if you, um, so at least the Sifu that we work with, um, I can recognize this work as, um, you can see all the works 
a made in one piece, one go with one neon. So like for the part that they might want to um, hide, they will use um, the paint to cover it. Mm -hmm. So that's how you could um, kind of hide the hide like maybe after this line you don't want to see this line you use the paints to yeah, cover yeah, it right yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, I've seen some um, other neons from China where they are using another method like we're like um, like uh, what's that word um, like when you are doing sewing so you would um, imagine if I want to make the same line Mm -hmm. They would just um, do the neon like this and then um, they will do it on top of an acrylic board. The acrylic board will be like a canvas and then they would just do this line here. Mm -hmm. And then this part, since they're not doing it, they will sew, like they will make another neon like this. Ah. So that is all covering each other rather than doing um, a whole neon as mm -hmm. one piece. Oh, so that's another okay. technique they use. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So um, that's how I could distinguish. Like sometimes mm -hmm. when I go to some shops, I look at the neon, I'll be asking, oh, where did you order it? And then they would say like, oh, from Taobao or like <laughs> or from a Chinese um, uh, neon maker. And then I'll be like, oh yeah, because this making method is so different to the ones in Hong Kong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I like to also look at how mm -hmm. if there's any cultural uh, difference in different neon makings yeah. around the world as well. I think that's quite interesting. Oh, and where is where is the biggest community kind of? It was supposed of... to be Hong Kong, but now um, Japan and US is definitely catching up, and you can see a lot of neon signs in Japan, oh, and as well as they have a lot of different studios in US where they promote it a lot as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's why I still yeah. I think it would be very interesting when I visit different neon studios. Yeah. And, um, you know, the special thing about craft is that even very similar to the My Like My Hood exhibition, the experience we had, like we had international artists like working with Sifu. Like, obviously, there's a language barrier because of like even for the age gap and the language gap. But because of the craft itself, it actually... It's very easy for people to connect through crafts and that we don't really need a lot of words to actually communicate. So I'm very much looking forward to when I go to the Thai Neon Studio and speak with the Sifu, we just say like, oh, how is he bending it? What yeah. kind of method? Does he use different tools? Is this similar? Yeah. Can I actually find something similar? Yeah. Yeah. It's quite yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the last question. Mm -hmm. I know that you are very busy with with the current project, so <laughs> we am not going to take too much of your time. But uh, if you would have advice for people who would like to start, what what would you uh, suggest to 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 people like how to start new project? Um, let me think. For me to learn any craft, the tool is the most important thing. Um, based off my experience with neon making, um, birkage making, or even marjong tile carving, the first step is always how to sharpen your tools. Because without the tools, you basically can't do anything. And um, it's also very important that you have, it would be very nice if you have a master to learn it from. Or even if you do not, you can also try another means. Just like me, I'll practice the craft myself. And then I will ask for advice every now and then. And then to actually get real feedback from the master himself. And then I think that's a very good process as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think to have a, the guidance and, and yeah. to see the real master, how he's doing it, it's so important as well. Um, thank you so much, Karen, for, for walk us through. Hi everyone! So I hope you enjoyed this episode How to Make Neon with Karen. Yeah! Uh, our master, future master of neon. So I just, hope. you know, uh, check it out her work. And if you want to know more about Karen, don't hesitate to reach to her. Um, the address of her Instagram and website are below. And talk to you soon. If you have any comments, don't hesitate to leave it below and like the video and subscribe to the channel if you would like to hear more. Thank Yay! you!